I say, bid come before us, Angelo. Lord Angelo. What figure of us think you he will bear, Aeschylus? If any in Vienna be of worth to undergo such ample grace and honor, it is Lord Angelo. My lord, my lord, my lord. Look where he comes. Always obedient to your grace's will, I come to know your pleasure. Angelo, in our remove, be thou at full ourself. Mortality and mercy in Vienna live in thy tongue and heart. Old Aeschylus, though first in question, is thy secondary. Take thy commission. Now, good my lord, let there be some more test made of my metal before so noble and so great a figure be stamped upon it. No more evasion we have with a leavened and prepared choice proceeded to you. Therefore, take your honors. We shall write to you as time and our concerning shall importune how it goes with us and to look to know what doth befall you here. So fare you well. To the hopeful execution do I leave you of your commissions. Yet give leave, my lord, that we may bring you something on the way. My haste may not admit it, nor need you on mine honor have to do with any scruple. Your scope is as mine own, so to enforce or qualify the laws as to your soul seems good. Give me your hand. I'll privily away. Fare you well. The heavens give safety to your purposes. Lead forth and bring you back in happiness. I thank you. Fare you well. Fellow, why dost thou show me thus to the world? Bear me to prison where I am committed. I do it not in evil disposition, Claudio, but from Lord Angelo by special charge. Why, how now, Claudio? Whence comes this restraint? From too much liberty, my Lucio, liberty. But what's thy offence, Claudio? What but to speak of would offend again. For what is it? Murder? No. Lechery? Call it so. Away, sir. You must go. One word, good friend. Lucio, a word with you. A hundred, if they'll do you any good. Is lechery so looked after? Thus stands it with me. Upon a true contract, I got possession of Julietta's bed. You know the lady, she is fast my wife, save that we do the denunciation lack of outward order. This we came not to, only for propagation of a dower remaining in the coffer of her friends from whom we thought it meet to hide our love till time had made them for us. But it chances the stealth of our most mutual entertainment with character too gross is writ on Juliet. With child, perhaps. Unhappily even so. Mm. And the new deputy now for the duke, this new governor, Angelo, awakes me all the enrolled penalties which have like unscarred armor hung by the wall so long that 19 zodiacs have gone round and none of them been worn. And for a name, now puts the drowsy and neglected act freshly on me. Tis surely for a name. I warrant it is. Send after the duke and appeal to him. I have done so, but he's not to be found. I prithee, Lucio, do me this kind service. This day my sister should the cloister enter and there receive her approbation. Acquaint her with the danger of my state. Implore her in my voice that she make friends to the strict deputy. Bid herself assay him. I have great hope in that. For in her youth there is a prone and speechless dialect such as move men. Besides, she hath prosperous art when she will play with reason and discourse, and well she can persuade. I pray she may. I'll to her. I thank you, good friend Lucia. Within two hours. Come, officer. Away. Sir, good Friar Peter, I have delivered to Lord Angelo, a man of stricture and firm abstinence, my absolute power and place here in Vienna, and he supposes me travel to Poland, for so I have strewed it in the common ear, and so it is received. Now, pious sir, you will demand of me why I do this. Gladly, my lord. We have strict statutes and most biting laws, the needful bits and curbs for headstrong steeds, which for these fourteen years we have let slip even like an o'ergrown lion in a cave that goes not out to prey. Now, as fond fathers, having bound up the threatening twigs of birch, only to stick it in their children's sight for terror, not for use, in time the rod becomes more mocked and feared. So are decrees. Dead to infliction, to themselves are dead. And liberty plucks justice by the nose. The baby beats the nurse, and quite a thwart goes all to court. It rested in your grace to unloose this tied-up justice when you pleased. And it in you more dreadful would have seemed than in Lord Angelo. I do fear too dreadful, saith to us all to give the people scope, to my tyranny to strike and gall them for what I bid them do. Therefore, my father, I have on Angelo imposed the office. And to behold his sway, I will, as twere a brother of your order, visit both prince and people. Therefore, I prithee, supply me with the habit, 
and instruct how I may formally in person bear me like a true friar. Lord Angelo is precise, stands at a guard with envy, scarce confesses that his blood flows, or that his appetite is more to bread than stone. Hence shall we see, if power change purpose, what our sea must be. Who's that which calls? Hail, Virgin. If you be, as those cheek roses proclaim you are no less, can you so stead me as bring me to the sight of Isabella? I am Isabella. Gentle and fair. Your brother kindly greets you. And not to be weary with you, he's in prison. Whoa, me? For what? For that which, if myself might be his judge, he should receive his punishment in thanks. <laughs> He hath got his friend with child. Sir, make me not your story. It is true. Your brother and his lover have embraced. As those that feed grow full, as blossoming time that from the seedness the bare fallow brings to teeming foison, even so her plenteous womb expresseth his full tilth and husbandry. Someone with child by him. My cousin, Juliet. Is she your cousin? Adoptedly, as schoolmaids change their names by vain though apt affection. She it is. Oh, let him marry her. This is the point. The Duke is very strangely gone from hence. Upon his place, and with full line of his authority, governs Lord Angelo, a man whose blood is very snow broth, one who never feels the wanton stings and motions of the sense, but doth rebate and blunt his natural edge with profits of the mind, study and fast. He hath picked out an act, under whose heavy sense your brother's life falls into forfeit. He arrests him on it and follows close the rigor of the statute to make him an example. All hope is gone unless you have the grace by your fair prayer to soften Angelo. And that's my pith of business twixt you and your poor brother. Doth he so seek his life? Has censured him already, and as I hear, the provost hath a warrant for his execution. Alas! What poor abilities in me to do him good? Assay the power you have. My power? Alas, I doubt... Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. Go to Lord Angelo and let him learn to know when maidens sue, men give like gods. But when they weep and kneel, all their petitions are as freely theirs as they themselves would owe them. I'll see what I can do. But speedily. I will about it straight. I take my leave of you. Good, sir. Adieu. You must not make a scarecrow of the law, Aeschylus. Setting it up to fear the birds of prey and let it keep one shape till custom make it their perch and not their terror. Aye, but yet let us be keen and rather cut a little, Angelo, than fall and bruise to death. Alas, this gentleman whom I would save had a most noble father. Let but your honor know. Had time cohered with place or place with wishing, whether you had not some time in your life erred in this point which now you censure him and pull the law upon you. Tis one thing to be tempted, Aeschylus, another thing to fall. I not deny the jury passing on the prisoner's life may in the sworn twelve have a thief or two guiltier than him they try. What's open made to justice, that justice seizes. You may not so extenuate his offence, for I have had such faults. But rather tell me, when I that censure him do so offend, let mine own judgment pattern out my death, and nothing come impartial. Sir, he must die. Be it as your wisdom will. Where is the provost? Here, if it like, Your Honor. See that Claudio be executed by nine tomorrow morning. Bring him his confessor, let him be prepared. For that's the utmost of his pilgrimage. Lord Angelo, here is the sister of the man condemned desires access to you. Hath he a sister? Aye, my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of a sisterhood. If not already. Well, let her be admitted. Say it, Your Honor. You're welcome. What's your will? I am a woeful suitor to Your Honor. Please, but Your Honor, hear me. Well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor, and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I would not plead, but that I must, for which I must not plead, but I am at war twixt will and will not. Well, the matter? I have a brother is condemned to die. 
I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it. By every fault's condemned, ere it be done. Mine with a very cipher of a function, to find the faults whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Oh, just but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Did not or so. Do him again, entreat him, kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You're too cold. If you should need a pin, you could not with more tamer tongue desire it. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? No, but I will not. That I cannot do. But might you do it, and do the world no wrong, if so your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him? He's sentenced. It is too late. You are too cold. Too late? Why, no! Either to speak a word may call it in again. Well, believe this, no ceremony that to great ones longs, not the king's crown, nor the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon, nor the judge's robe, become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If he had been as you, and you as he, you would have slipped like him, but he like you would not have been so stern. Pray you be gone. I would to heaven I had your potency, and you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? No. I would tell what twere to be a judge and what a prisoner. I touch him. There's the vein. Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. Alas, alas. Why, all the souls that were were forfeit once, and he that might the vantage best have took found out the remedy. How would you be if he which is the top of judgment should but judge you as you are? Oh, think on that, and mercy then will breathe within your lips like man new made. Be you content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemns your brother. Were he my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, oh, that sudden... Spare him. Spare him. He's not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens we kill the fowl of season. Shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves? Good, good, my lord, bethink you. Who is it that hath died for this offence? There's many have committed it. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slipped. Those many had not dared to do that evil, yet that the first that did the edict infringe had answered for his deed. Yet show some pity. I show it most of all when I show justice. Your brother dies tomorrow. Be content. So, you must be the first that gives this sentence, and he that suffers. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant strength. But it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. Could great men thunder as Jove himself does, Jove would ne'er be quiet. For every pelting petty officer would use his heaven for thunder, nothing but thunder. Merciful heaven, thou rather with thy sharp and sulphurous bolt splits the unwedgeable annulled oak than the soft myrtle. But man, proud man, dressed in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured, his glassy essence, like an angry ape, play such fantastic tricks before high heaven as make the angels weep, who with our spleens would all themselves laugh mortal. Oh, to him, to him, when she will relent. We cannot weigh our brother with ourself. Great men may jest with saints, tis wit in them, but in the less foul profanation. That in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldier is flat blasphemy. Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it err like others, hath yet a kind of medicine in itself that skins the vice of the top. Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks, and tis such sense that my sense breeds with it. Fare you well. Gentle, my lord, turn back. I will bethink me. Come again tomorrow. Go to, tis well. Away. Heaven keep your honor safe. Amen. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? At any time, forenoon. Save your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. her fault or mine. The tempter or the tempted, who sins most? Ah, not she. Nor doth she tempt. But it is I that lying by the violet in the sun, 
do as the carrion does, not as the flower, corrupt with virtuous season. Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than woman's likeness? Having waste ground enough, shall we desire to raise the sanctuary and pitch our evils there? Oh, pie, pie, pie. What dost thou? Oh, what art thou, Angelo? Dost thou desire her foully for those things that make her good? Oh, let her brother live. Thieves for their robbery have authority when judges steal themselves. What? Do I love her? That I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What is it I dream on? Oh, cunning enemy, that to catch a saint with saints dost bait thy hook. Most dangerous is that temptation that doth goad us on to sin in loving virtue. Never could this trumpet with all her double vigor, art and nature, once stir my temper. But this virtuous maid subdues me quite. Ever till now, when men were found, I smiled and wondered how. Hail to you, Provost. Uh, so I think you are. I am the Provost. What's your will, good friar? Bound by my charity and my blessed order, I come to visit the afflicted spirits here in the prison. Do me the common right to let me see them. God, you know. Oh, heavens, what stuff is here? Well, oh, twas merry, merry world since of two usuries the merriest was put down. Come your way, sir. Bless you, good father, friar. And you, good brother, father. What offence hath this man made you, sir? Marry, sir, he hath offended the law. And, sir, we take him to be a thief, too, sir. Oh. For we have found upon him, sir, a strange picklock, <laughs> which we have sent to the deputy. Aye, sir, a, a board, a wicked board. Ah, oh, I spy comfort, I cry bail. Here's a gentleman and a friend of mine. Lucio! How now, noble Pompey? What, at the wheels of Caesar? Art thou led in triumph? Art going to prison, Pompey? Oh, yes, faith, sir. Why, it is not amiss, Pompey. Farewell. Go, say I sent thee thither. <laughs> For debt, Pompey, or how? For being a board. For being a board. Well, then, imprison him. If imprisonment be the due of a board, why, it is his right. Board is he. Farewell, good Pompey. I hope so. Your good worship will be my bail. No, indeed will I not, Pompey. I will pray, Pompey, to increase your bondage if you take it not patiently. Adieu, trusty Pompey. Oh. Bless you, Friar. And you. Uh, does Bridget paint still, Pompey? Huh? Come your way, sir, come. You will not bail me then, sir? Then, Pompey, nor now. Um, what news abroad, Friar? What news? Come your way, sir, come. Oh. Go to kennel, Pompey, go. Oh. What news, Friar, of the Duke? I know none. Can you tell me of any? Some say he's with the Emperor of Russia. Other some, he is in Rome. But where is he, thank you? I know not where, but wheresoever. I wish him well. It was a mad, fantastical trick of him to steal from the state and usurp the beggary he was never born to. Lord Angelo dukes it well in his absence. He puts transgression toot. He does well in it. A little more lenity to lechery would do no harm in him. Something too crabbed that way, friar. Uh, they say this Angelo was not made by man and woman after the downright way of creation. Is it true, thank you? How should he be made, then? Some report a sea maid spawned him, some that he was begot between two stockfishes. But it is certain that when he makes water, his urine is congealed ice. That I know to be true. And you are pleasant, sir, and speak a base. Oh, why, what a ruthless thing is this in him for the rebellion of a codpiece to take away the life of a man. Would the duke that is absent have done this? Uh, he would have hanged a man for the getting a hundred bastards. He would have paid for the nursing a thousand. He had some feeling of the sport. He knew the service, and that instructed him to mercy. I never heard the absent duke much detected for women. He was not inclined that way. Oh, sir, you were deceived. He would be drunk, too. That let me inform you. You do him wrong, surely. Sir, I was an inward of his, and this I can let you understand. The greater file of the subject held the Duke to be wise. Wise? But no question but he was. A very superficial, ignorant, unweighing fellow. Either this is envy in you, folly, or mistaking. Let the Duke be but testimonied, and he shall appear to the envious a scholar, a statesman, and a soldier. Therefore you speak unskillfully. Or, if your knowledge be more, it is much darkened in your mass. Sir, I know him, and I love him. Love talks with better knowledge, and knowledge with dearer love. Come, sir, I know what I know. I can hardly believe that, since you know not what you speak. But if ever the Duke return, as our prayers are he may, let me desire you to make your answer before him. If it be honest you have spoke, you have courage to maintain it. I am bound to call upon you, and I pray you your name. Sir, my name is Lucio, well known to the Duke. 
He shall know you better, sir, if I may live to report you. I fear you not. I would the Duke we talk of were returned again. This Angelo will unpeople the province with continency. Sparrows must not build in his house eaves because they are lecherous. <laughs> the Duke, I say to thee again, would eat mutton on Fridays. Um, he's past it now. Yet, and I say to thee now, he would mouth with a beggar, though she smelt brown bread and garlic. <laughs> say that I said so. Farewell, good friar. I prithee pray for me. What king so strong can tie the gall up in the slanderous tongue? How now, fair maid? I am come to know your pleasure. That you might know it would much better please me than to demand what it is. Your brother cannot live. Even so. Heaven keep your honor. Yet may he live a while. And it may be as long as you or I. Yet he must die. Under your sentence? Yes. When I beseech you that in his reprieve, longer or shorter, he may be so fitted that his soul sicken not. Which had you rather? That the most just law now took your brother's life, or to redeem him, give up your body to such sweet uncleanness as she that he hath stained? Sir, believe this. I had rather give my body than my soul. I talk not of your soul. Answer to this. I, now the voice of the recorded law, pronounce a sentence on your brother's life. Might there not be a charity in sin to save this brother's life? Please you to do it. I'll take it as a peril to my soul. It is no sin at all, but charity. Hear me. Your sense pursues not mine. Either you are ignorant or seem so craftily, and that's not good. If you receive it plain, I'll speak more gross. Your brother is to die. So? And his offense is so, as it appears, accounted to the law upon that pain. True. Admit no other way to save his life as I subscribe not that, nor any other, but in the looser question, that you, his sister, finding yourself desired of such a person, whose credit with the judge, or own great place, could fetch your brother from the manacles of the all-binding law, that there were no earthly mean to save him, that either you must lay down the treasure of your body to this supposed, or else to let him suffer. What would you do? As much for my poor brother as myself. That is, were I under the terms of death, the impression of keen whips I'd wear as rubies, and strip myself to death as to a bed that longing had been sick for, ere I'd yield my body up to shame. Then must your brother die. And twere the cheaper way. Better it were a brother died at once, than that a sister, by redeeming him, should die for ever. Were not you then as cruel as the sentence that you have slandered so? Ignomy and ransom and free pardon are of two houses. Lawful mercy is nothing kin to foul redemption. You seem of late to make the law a tyrant, and rather prove the sliding of your brother a merriment than a vice. Oh, pardon me, my lord. It oft falls out to have what we would have. We speak not what we mean. I something do excuse the thing I hate for his advantage that I dearly love. We are all frail. Else let my brother die, if not a federary, but only he. Oh, and succeed thy weakness. Nay. Women are frail too. Aye, as the glasses where they view themselves, which are as easy broke as they make forms. Women, help heaven. Men their creation, mine profiting by them. Nay, call us ten times frail, for we are soft as our complexions are, and credulous to false prints. I think it well. And from this testimony of your own sex, since I suppose we are made to be no stronger than faults may shake our frames, let me be bold. I do arrest your words. Be that you are, that is, a woman. If you be more, you are none. If you be one, as you are well expressed by all external warrants, show it now by putting on the destined livery. I have no tongue but one. Gentle, my lord, let me entreat you. Speak the former language. Plainly conceive. I love you. My brother did love Juliet, and you tell me that he shall die for it. He shall not, Isabel, if you give me love. I know your virtue hath a license in it, which seems a little fouler than it is to pluck on others. Believe me, on mine honor, my words express my purpose. <sighs> little honor to be much believed, and most pernicious purpose, seeming 
Seeming, I will proclaim thee, Angelo. Look for it. Sign me a present pardon for my brother. Or with an outstretched throat, I'll tell the world aloud what man thou art. Who will believe thee, Isabel? Thy unsoiled name, the austereness of my life, thy vouch against you, and my place in the state, will so your accusation away, you shall stifle in your own report and smell of calumny. I have begun, and now I give my sensual race the rein. Fit thy consent to my sharp appetite, lay by all nicety and prolixus blushes, that banish what they sue for. Redeem thy brother by yielding up thy body to my will, or else he must not only die the death, but thy unkindness shall his death draw out to lingering sufferance. Answer me tomorrow, or by the affection that now guides me most, I'll prove a tyrant to him. As for you, say what you can. My faults always your truth. <laughs> this, who would believe me? I to my brother, though he hath fallen by prompture of the blood, yet hath he in him such a mind of honor that had he twenty heads to tender down on twenty bloody blocks, he'd yield them up before his sister should her body stoop to such abhorred pollution. I'll tell him yet of Angelo's request and fit his mind to death for his soul's rest. you hope of pardon from Lord Angelo? The miserable have no other medicine but only hope. I've hoped to live and I'm prepared to die. What ho! Peace here! Grace and good company! Who is there? Come in. The wish deserves a welcome. Dear sir, ere long I'll visit you again. Most holy sir, I thank you. My business is a word or two with Claudia. And very welcome. Look, senior, here's your sister. Provost, a word with you. As many as you please. Lord dear. Bring me to hear them speak where I may be concealed. Ah. Now, sister, what's the comfort? Why, as all comforts are, most good, most good indeed. Lord Angelo, having affairs to heaven, intends you for his swift ambassador, where you shall be an everlasting leger. Therefore, your best appointment make with speed. Tomorrow, you set on. Is there no remedy? None. But such remedy as to save a head, to cleave a heart in twain. But is there any? Yes, brother, you may live. There is a devilish mercy in the judge, if you implore it, that will free your life, but fetter you till death. Perpetual durance? Aye, just. Perpetual durance. A restraint, though all the world's vastidity you had, to a determined scope. But in what nature? In such a one as you consenting to it would bark your honor from that trunk you bear and leave you naked. Let me know the point. Oh. I do fear thee, Claudio, and I quake, lest thou a feverous life should entertain, and six or seven winters more respect than a perpetual honor. Darest thou die? Why give you me this shame? If I must die, I will encounter darkness as a bride and hug it in mine arms. Bear spake my brother. Bear my father's grave did utter forth a voice. Yes, thou must die. Thou art too noble to conserve a life in base appliances. This outward sainted deputy, whose settled visage and deliberate word nips youth in the head, and follies doth in you as falcon doth the fowl is yet a devil. If I would yield him my virginity, thou mightst be freed. Oh, heavens, it cannot be. Yes, he would give it thee from this rank offence so to offend him still. This night's the time that I should do what I abhor to name, or else thou diest tomorrow. Thou shalt not do it. Oh, were it but my life, I'd throw down for your deliverance as frankly as a pin. Thanks, dear Isabel. Be ready, Claudio. 
for your death tomorrow. Death is a fearful thing. And shamed life a hateful. I but to die. And go we know not where. To lie in cold obstruction. And to rot. The weariest and most loathed worldly life that age, ache, penury and imprisonment can lay on nature is a paradise to what we fear of death. Alas, alas. Sweet sister, let me live. What sin you do to save a brother's life, nature dispenses with the deed so far that it becomes a virtue. Oh, coward. Oh, dishonest wretch. Wilt thou be made a man out of my vice? Is not a kind of incest to take life from thine own sister's shame? Nay, hear me, Isabel. Oh, fie, fie, fie! Tis best that thou diest quickly. Oh, hear me, Isabel. But say a word, young sister, but one word. What is your will? Might you dispense with your leisure? I would by and by have some speech with you. The satisfaction I would require is likewise your own benefit. I have no superfluous leisure. My stay must be stolen out of other affairs. But I will attend you a while. Have you heard of Mariana, the sister of Frederick, the great soldier who miscarried at sea? I have heard of the lady, and good words went with her name. She should this Angelo have married. It was affianced to her by oath, and the nuptial appointed. Between which time of the contract and limit of the solemnity, her brother Frederick was wrecked at sea, having in that perished vessel the dowry of his sister. But mark how heavily this befell to the poor gentlewoman. There she lost a noble and renowned brother, with him, the portion and sinew of her fortune, her marriage dowry. With both, her commonant husband, this well-seeming Angelo. Can this be so? Did Angelo so leave her? Left her in her tears and dried not one of them with his comfort. Swallowed his vows whole, pretending in her discoveries of dishonor. But how out of this can she avail? It is a rupture that you may easily heal. And the cure of it not only saves your brother, but keeps you from dishonor in doing it. Show me how, good father. This forenamed maid hath yet in her the continuance of her first affection. Go you to Angelo, answer his requiring with a plausible obedience, agree with his demands to the point. Only refer yourself to this advantage. First, that your stay with him may not be long, that the time may have all shadow and silence in it, and the place answer to convenience. This being granted in course, and now follows all. We shall advise this wronged maid to go in your place. If the encounter acknowledge itself hereafter, it may compel him to her recompense. And here by this is your brother saved, your honor untainted, the poor Mariana advantaged, and the corrupt deputy scaled. The maid will I frame and make fit for his attempt. Haste you speedily to Angelo. If for this night he entreat you to his bed, give him promise of satisfaction. I will presently to St. Luke's. There at the moated grange reside this dejected Mariana. At that place call upon me, and dispatch with Angelo that it may be quickly. I thank you for this comfort. Fare you well, good father. Come hither, Bumpy. Can you cut off a man's head? If the man be a bachelor, sir, I can. If he be a married man, he's his wife's head. I can never cut off a woman's head. Come, sir, leave me your snatches and yield me a direct answer. Tomorrow morning I to die Claudio and Barnardine. Here is in our prison a common executioner who in his office lacks a helper. If he will take it on you to assist him, he shall redeem you from your jibes. If not, you shall have your full time of imprisonment and your deliverance with an unfitted whipping. Oh. For you've been a notorious board. Sir, I've been an unlawful board time out of mine. But yet I will be content to be a lawful hangman. I would be glad to receive some instruction from my fellow partner. What a Borson? Where's the Borson there? Here you call, sir. Sir, here's a fellow will help you tomorrow in your execution. If been a ball. A ball, sir, fire upon him. He'll discredit our mystery. Go to, sir. You weigh equally. A feather will turn the scale. Provide your flock on your axe tomorrow. Four o'clock. Go on board. I'll instruct thee in my trade. Follow. I do desire to learn. <laughs> Very well met, Isabella. What is the news from this good deputy? He hath a garden circular with brick, whose western side is with a vineyard back. And to that vineyard is a planchet gate that makes his opening with this bigger key. This other doth command a little door which from the vineyard to the garden leads. 
There have I made my promise upon the heavy middle of the night to call upon him. But shall you, in your knowledge, find this way? I have taken a due and wary note upon it, with whispering and most guilty diligence. In action, all of precept, he did show me the way twice all. Are there no other tokens between you, Greek, concerning her observance? No, none. But only a repair in the dark, and that I have possessed him my most stay can be but brief. For I have made him know I have a servant comes with me along that stays upon me, whose persuasion is I come about my brother. It is well borne up. I have not yet made known to Mariana a word of this. What her within? Come forth. Father. Mariana, I pray you be acquainted with this maid. She comes to do you good. I do desire the like. Do you persuade yourself that I respect you? Good friar, I know you do and have found it. Take then this, your companion, by the hand, who hath a story ready for your ear. I shall attend your leisure. But make haste, the vaporous night approaches. Will it please you walk aside? Welcome, Father. The best and wholesomest spirits of the night envelop you, good provost. Who called here of late? None since the curfew rung. Not Isabel? No. They will then out long. What comfort is the Claudia? There's some in hope. As near the dawning, provost, as it is, you shall hear more ere morning. Happily, you something know, yet I believe there comes no countermand. Where is the provost? Oh, this is his lordship's man. And here comes Claudio's pardon. My lord hath sent you this note, and by me this further charge, that you swerve not from the smallest article of it, neither in time, matter, or other circumstance. Good morrow, for as I take it, it is almost day. I shall obey him. Now, sir, what news? Pray, well, let's hear. Whatsoever you may hear to the contrary, let Claudio be executed by four of the clock and in the afternoon Barnardin. For my better satisfaction, let me have Claudio's head sent to me by five. Let this be duly performed with the thought that more depends on it than we must yet deliver. Thus fail not to do your office, as you will answer it at your peril. What say you to this, sir? What is that Barnardine who is to be executed in the afternoon? Oh, a bohemian born, but here nursed up and bred, one that is a prisoner nine years. How came it that the absent duke had not either delivered him to his liberty or executed him? I have heard it was ever his manner to do so. Well, his friends still wrought reprise for him, and indeed his fact, till now in the government of Lord Angelo, came not to an undoubtful proof. It is now apparent? Oh, most manifest, and not denied by himself. Hath he borne himself penitently in prison? He hath evermore had the liberty of the prison. Give him leave to escape, hence he would not. Drunk many times a day, if not many days entirely drunk. We very oft awaked him as if to carry him to execution and showed him a seeming warrant for it. Hath not moved him at all. More of him anon. Claudio, whom here you have warrant to execute, is no greater forfeit to the law than Angela, who has sentenced him. To make you understand this in a manifested effect, I crave but four days' respite for the which you are to do me both a present and a dangerous courtesy. Pray, sir, in what? In the delaying death. Alack, how may I do it? Having the hour limited and an express command under penalty to deliver his head in the view of Angelo, I may make my case as Claudio's to cross this in the smallest. By the vow of mine order, I warrant you. If my instructions may be your guide, let this Barnardine be this morning executed and his head borne to Angelo. Angelo hath seen them both and will discover the favour. Oh, death's a great disguiser, and you may add to it. Shave the head and tie the beard, and say it was the desire of the penitent to be so bared before his death. You know the course is common. Pardon me, good father, it is against my oath. Were you sworn to the duke, or to the deputy? To him, and to his substitutes. You will think you have made no offence if the duke avouched the justice of your dealing. But what likelihood is in that? Not a resemblance, but a certainty. Look you, sir. Here is the hand and seal of the Duke. You know the character, I doubt not. And the signet is not strange to you. I know them both. The contents of this is the return of the Duke. This is a thing that Angelo knows not. Put not yourself into amazement how these things should be. All difficulties are but easy when they are known. Call your execution off with Barnardine's head. I'll give him a present shrift and advise him for a better place. Yet you are amazed, but this shall absolutely resolve you. Come away. It is almost clear dawn. Bring Barnardine hither. Master Barnardine. 
You must rise and be hanged, Master Barnardine. What ho, Barnardine? Uh, 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 pox in your throats. Who makes that noise there? What are you? Your friends, sir, the hangman. You must be so good, sir, to rise and be put to death. Away, you rogue, away. I'm sleepy. Tell him he must awake, and that quickly, too. Pray, Master Barnardine, awake till you are executed and sleep afterwards. Go in to him and fetch him out. He is coming, sir. He is coming. I hear his straw rustle. If he acts upon the block, sir. Very ready, sir. Now, oh, now, Ab Paulson. <laughs> What's the news with you? Truly, sir, I would desire you to clap into your prayers, for look, you the warrant's come. <laughs> you rogue. I've been drinking all night. I'm not fitted for oh, it. Oh, a bitter server. He that drinks all night and is hanged betimes in the morning may sleep the sounder all the next day. <laughs> okay, sir, here comes your ghostly uh, father, do uh, we just now think of? Sir, induced by my charity and hearing how hastily you are to depart, uh, I am come to advise you, uh, comfort you, and pray with you. <laughs> oh, Briar. Not I. I have been drinking hard all night, and I will have more time to prepare me, or they shall beat out my brains with billets. <laughs> I will not consent to die this day, that surgeon. Oh, sir, you must, and therefore I beseech you, look forward on the journey you shall go. I swear I will not die today for any man's persuasion. But hear you. Not a word. <laughs> if you have anything to say to me, come to my ward. For well, thence will I not today. Oh. <laughs> Unfit to live or die, oh gravel heart. After him, fellows, bring him to the block. Now, sir, how do you find the prisoner? A creature unprepared, unmeet for death. And to transport him in the mind he is, were damnable. Here in the prison, father, there died this morning of a cruel fever, one ragazin. A most notorious pirate, a man of Claudio's years. His beard and head just of his colour. What if we do omit this reprobate till he were well inclined and satisfy the deputy with a visage of Ragazine, more like to Claudia? Oh, it is an action that heaven provides. Dispatch it presently. The hour draws on, prefixed by Angelo. See this be done. Ere twice the sun hath made his journal greeting to thunder generation, you shall find your safety manifested. I am your free defendant. Quick, dispatch, and send the head to Angelo. Soon Isabel will come to know if yet her brother's pardon be come hither. But I will keep her ignorant of her good, to make her heavenly comforts of despair when it is least expected. Now will I write letters to Angelo. The provost, he shall bear them, whose contents shall witness to him I am near at home, and that by great injunctions I am bound to enter publicly. Him I desire to meet me at the consecrated fount a league below the city. And from thence, by cold gradations and well-balanced form, we shall proceed with Angelo. Every letter he hath writ hath disvouched other Angelo. Why meet him at the gates and we deliver our authorities there, Aeschylus? I guess not. And why should we proclaim it an hour before his entry? If any crave redress of injustice, they should exhibit their petitions in the street. He shows his reason for that, to have a dispatch of complaints and to deliver us from devices hereafter, which will then have no power to stand against us. Well, I beseech you, let it be proclaimed. I shall, sir. Very well. Good night. This deed unshapes me quite, makes me unpregnant and dull to all proceedings. A deflowered maid and by an eminent body that enforced the law against it. But that her tender shame will not proclaim against her maiden loss, how might she tongue me? Yet reason dares her know, for my authority bears a credent bulk that no particular scandal once can touch, but it confounds the breather. He should have lived. Say that his riotous youth, with a dangerous sense, might in the times to come obtain revenge by so receiving a dishonored life with a ransom of such shame. Would yet he had lived. Alack, when once our grace we have forgot, nothing goes right. We would, and we would not. Ah, my very worthy cousin, fairly met. 
Our old and faithful friend, we are glad to see you. Happy return, Betty, Your Royal Grace. Happy return. Many and hearty thankings to you both. Angelo, give me your hand. And let the subject see to make them know that outward courtesies would fain proclaim favours that keep within. Come, Aeschylus, you must walk by us on another hand. Justice, O royal duke, veil your regard upon a wronged, I would fain have said, a maid. O worthy prince, dishonour not your eye by throwing it on any other object till you have heard me in my true complaint and given me justice, 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 justice. Relate your wrongs. I am the sister of one Claudio, condemned upon the act of fornication to lose his head, condemned by Angelo. I, in probation of a sisterhood, was sent to by my brother. One Lucio was then the messenger. That's I, and like your grace. I came to her from Claudio and desired her to try her gracious fortune with Lord Angelo for her poor brother's pardon. That's he indeed. You were not bid to speak. No, my good lord, nor wish to hold my peace. I wish you now then, for you take note of that. And when you have a business for yourself, Pray heaven you then be perfect. I warrant your honor. The warrants for yourself. Take heed to it. Proceed. I went to this pernicious, caitiff deputy. That's somewhat madly spoken. Pardon it, the phrase is to the matter. The matter? Proceed. In brief, he would not, but by gift of my chaste body to his concupiscible intemperate lust, release my brother. And after much debatement, my sisterly remorse confutes mine honor, and I did yield to him. But the next morn betimes, his purpose surfeiting, he sends a warrant for my poor brother's head. This is most likely. Oh, that it were as like as it is true. By heaven, fond wretch, thou knowest not what thou speakst. If he had so offended, he would have weighed thy brother by himself and not have cut him off. Someone hath set you on. Confess the truth and say by whose advice thou camest here to complain. And is this all? Heaven shield your grace from woe. As I, thus wronged, hence unbelieved go. I know you'd fain be gone, an officer, to prison with her. Shall we thus permit a blasting and a scandalous breath to fall on him so near us? This needs must be a practice. Who knew of your intent and in coming hither? One that I would were here, Friar Lodovic. Who knows that Lodovic? My lord, I know him. Tis a meddling friar. I do not like the man. Had he been lay, my lord, for certain words he spake against your grace in your retirement, I had swinged him soundly. Words against me? Let this friar be found. Blessed be your royal grace. I have stood by, my lord, and I have heard your royal ear abused. First hath this woman most wrongfully accused your substitute, who is as free from touch or soil with her as she from one ungot. Good friar, we did believe no less. Know you that friar, Lodovic, that she speaks of? I know him for a man divine and holy. But at this instant he is sick, my lord. First for this woman, to justify this worthy nobleman, so vulgarly and personally accused. Her shall you hear disprove it to her eyes, till she herself confess it. Come, cousin Angelo. In this I'll be impartial. Be you judge of your own cause. Is this the witness, friar? First let her show her face, and after speak. Pardon, my lord. I will not show my face until my husband bid me. You say your husband? Why, dost, my lord, and that is Angelo, who thinks he knows that he ne'er knew my body, but knows he thinks that he knows Isabel's. This is a strange abuse. Let's see thy face. My husband bids me. Now I will unmask. This is that face, thou cruel Angelo, which once thou swarest was worth the looking on. This is the body that took away the match from Isabel, and did supply thee at thy garden house in her imagined person. Know you this woman? Carnally, she says. Sarah, no more. Enough, my lord. My lord, I must confess I know this woman. And five years since, there was some speech of marriage betwixt myself and her. Since which time, I never spake with her, saw her, nor heard from her, upon my faith and honor. My good lord, but Tuesday night last gone in his garden house, he knew me as a wife. I did but smile till now. Now, good my lord, give me the scope of justice. My patience here is touched. I do perceive these poor informal women are no more but instruments of some more mightier member that sets them on. Let me have way, my lord, to find this practice out. Aye, with my heart, and punish them to your height of pleasure. There is another friar that set them on. Let him be sent for. Would he were here, my lord, for he indeed hath set the women on to this complaint. Your provost knows the place where he abides, and he may fetch him. Go, do it instantly. Yes, my lord. I, for a while, will leave you. But stir not you till you have well determined upon these slanderers. My lord, we'll do it thoroughly.
My lord, here comes the rascally friar I spoke of, here with the provost. Where is the duke? Tis he should hear me speak. The duke's in us, and we will hear you speak. Look, you speak justly. Boldly, at least. But, oh, poor souls, is the duke gone? Then is your cause gone too. The duke's unjust thus to retort your manifest appeal and put your trial in the villain's mouth, which here you come to accuse. This is the rascal. This is he I spoke of. Come here, good man, bald pate. Do you know me? And do you remember what you said of the duke? Most notedly, sir. Do you so, sir? And was the duke a fleshmonger, a fool and a coward, as you then reported him to be? You must, sir, uh, change persons with me ere you make that my report. I protest I love the duke as I love myself. Hark how the villain would close now after his treasonable abuse. Such a fellow is not to be talked with all. Away with him to prison. No, stay, sir, stay a while. Is it see? Help him, Lucia. Come, sir, come, sir, come, sir. Oh, sir, why, you bald pated lying rascal. You must be hooded, must you? Show your knave's visage with a pox to you. Show your sheep biting face and be hanged an hour. Wilt not off. Oh, oh. Thou art the first knave that e'er made to duke. First, provost, let me bail these gentle two. Lucio, sneak not away. The friar and you must have a word anon. Lay hold on him. This may prove worse than hanging. Come hither, Mariana. Angelo, wast e'er contracted to this woman? I was, my lord. Go take her hence and marry her instantly. Then, Angelo, thy faults thus manifested, we do condemn thee to the very block where Claudio stooped to death, and with like haste. Do you the office, friar, which consummate, return him here again. Go with him, provost. Oh, my most gracious lord, I hope you will not mock me with a husband. It is your husband mocked you with a husband. Consenting to the safeguard of your honor, I thought your marriage fit. Else imputation, for that he knew you, might reproach your life and choke your good to come. For his possessions, although by confiscation they are ours, we do in state and widow you withal, to buy you a better husband. Oh, my dear lord, I crave no other nor no better man. Never crave him, we are definitive. Gentle, my liege. You do but lose your labor. Away with him to death. Oh, my good lord. Sweet Isabel, take my part. Lend me your knees, and all my life to come, I'll lend you all my life to do you service. Against all sense you do importune her. He dies for Claudio's death. Isabel, sweet Isabel, do yet but kneel by me. Most bounteous, sir, look if it please you on this man condemned as if my brother lived. I partly think a due sincerity governed his deeds till he did look on me. Since it is so, let him not die. My brother had but justice in that he did the thing for which he died. For Angelo, his act did not o'ertake his bad intent and must be buried but as an intent that perished by the way. Thoughts are no subjects, intents, but merely thoughts. Your suit's unprofitable. Stand up, I say. Provost, what muffled fellow's that? A prisoner that I saved who should have died when Claudio lost his head. As like almost to Claudio as himself. Claudio's. If he be like your brother, for his sake is he pardoned. And for your lovely sake, give me your hand and say you will be mine. He is my brother too. But fitter time for that. By this, Lord Angelo perceives he's safe. Methinks I see a quickening in his eye. She, Claudio, that you wronged, look you restore. Joy to you, Mariana. Love her, Angelo. Dear Isabel, I have a motion much imports your good, whereto if you'll a willing ear incline, what's mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. So bring us to our palace, where we'll show what's yet behind that's me too all should know. 